Hi everyone, this is Rob Roy and welcome to the LA Wave Options US Market Update. Well, the big news of the week obviously is the FOMC meeting that just concluded today, another two-day meeting, and it kind of in the end was very similar to the last meeting where the Federal Reserve cut 25 basis points, but disappointed some uh, in not saying that they were committed to another 25 or more uh, basis points, but most people I think at this point, the market didn't react quite as bad as it did last time. The market did sell off, but as what happens quite often after an FOMC meeting, the initial reaction gets reversed. That's exactly what happened in today's trade. I think most people think that the Federal Reserve will follow along with uh, where the Fed funds futures are guiding them, which is likely 25 more basis cuts, uh, 25 more basis point cut at the next uh, meeting or uh, soon thereafter. What hasn't been talked about a lot is something that happened on Monday. Overnight, there is something called the repo, uh, repo funding, which is a repurchase agreement. It's basically short-term lending between banks and financial institutions. It's just an overnight rate uh, so that the banks and financial institutions can meet their requirements for liquidity that they have each and every day. So if they're a little bit short, they borrow it and they pay an overnight rate. Well, that rate spiked to 8.5% on Monday night. Interest rates have been going up. We'll take a look at that in the charts in a minute. But a spike to 8.5% really shocked a lot of people in the bond market. It hasn't gotten a lot of press in the equities market, maybe because it's a little scary. The Federal Reserve had to come in on Tuesday, and on Tuesday morning they did their own uh, repurchase agreements where basically they bought uh, U.S. Treasuries and mortgage-backed securities to the tune of $53 billion. And that was designed specifically to stabilize the markets so that uh, things wouldn't get a little bit too, uh, uh, too crazy. So uh, again, not a lot of talk about that in the equity markets, maybe because people are a little afraid that it could create uh, some uncertainty or nervousness because that's the kind of thing that froze the financial markets back in the, the big financial crisis of uh, 2008. It's very similar circumstances. And if it brings the, uh, the overnight lending and uh, the uh, uh, liquidity from banks to a halt, that's what causes the financial crisis. So uh, again, eerily remnant of uh, what happened back then. Now, this next thing we'll talk about is that was kind of a quasi-quantitative uh, easing move that the Federal Reserve did. I would repo is one of the instruments that they can use. And they talked about this. Again, not a whole lot of press in the financial networks about it, but they talked about that may be an instrument that they use going forward. So again, that is a little bit of a, a, a type of quantitative easing. So if they are going to begin to inject liquidity back into the uh, uh, economy, then that could be good for the markets. But uh, certainly we want to talk about both sides and further injection of liquidity along with rate cuts. Those are positive things for the market. But the other stuff is things that we need to be aware of so that we keep keep cautious. Uh, it is a time that uh, you want to follow the trends, trade the way the markets are trending, but also have in the back of your mind uh, that uh, things are not as stable as they may appear uh, from just the looks of an uptrending chart. Speaking of the charts, let's take a look at the charts. In taking a look at the chart of the S&P 500, you can see that we did break out of that consolidation. The last time we talked, we had this bit of a sideways consolidation, which actually ended up morphing itself into a kind of a triangle, not the uh, greatest formation of a triangle, but it was a, a bit of a symmetrical triangle nonetheless. And we had a doji there that occurred on the 3rd of September. And from there, we broke to the upside, which you break out of triangles. In this case, we did break to the upside following the LA wave pattern that's uh, been established. We're in a complex wave five of an overall five wave pattern, which makes sense because wave three uh, was um, a mono wave. So when we're going back to looking at the one, three, and five, which are the impulse waves within an overall five wave pattern, uh, quite often if you have a long three mono wave, it's gonna be followed by a, a complex wave five, which is fancy terminology for just a, a pattern within a pattern or a wave within a wave, if you will. I know that there was some comments that uh, the setup 
Last time we talked might have been uh, uh, a bear flag, and I don't ever criticize anybody else's technical analysis. There's a lot of other technical analysis systems out there. And in the end, all you have to do is have a system you believe in, be right more than you're wrong, and manage your risk, and you can be successful. I happen to trust Elliott Wave, and I have for uh, the past uh, uh, 20 years of my uh, trading. So um, this is what I'm sharing with you with my analysis. And uh, uh, if others disagree, then um, you know that that's that's fine. So taking a look at this, we take a look at this. Fib retracement, we've looked at this before, and I mentioned that the 61.8% level there needed to hold, and uh, it has, and from there we've bounced to the upside, and we said that uh, with that pattern in mind, uh, we could be setting up for a zigzag. We do have a qualified zigzag pattern with the impulse A, and then the retracement back to the 61.8% level being the corrective B. So we have an impulse A and a corrective B. That's exactly what you look for uh, in a zigzag. It's uh, the best setup for a zigzag in my opinion. And so we are currently underway with the potential for the C wave extension. The market has made a new high since last time we talked. So in essence, that does mean that the C wave is fully qualified and potentially headed up to that 100% extension level. If it fails from here, then we're heading back down to where the B was, uh, all the way back down to that level around 284 on the SPY. Uh, at this point in time, it looks like uh, the market may be trying to gather itself and move higher. We'll see how that all plays out. But at this point in time, it looks good for uh, a continued move to the upside. So with that in mind, let's take a look at some other indicators and what they may be sharing with us. I've mentioned the, uh, the kind of the, the behind the scenes stuff that was going on Monday and Tuesday that, again, not a whole lot of people have talked about, which could be uh, uh, a little on the spooky side. And let's look at the VIX to see what has gone on with the volatility. Last time we talked, we mentioned about this symmetrical triangle that we had here in the VIX. We actually had a very nice triangle. A lot of people felt like, you know, just as we did last time back here in May, when we had a symmetrical triangle, uh, that the market didn't really have enough room for a downside breakout in the triangle. But one thing I've learned over the years, and I've traded an awful lot of triangle patterns, it's the mainstay of our volatility strategy that we share and send out to our subscribers, is the fact that you never try to pick a direction in a triangle. It can move either way. Uh, even if you don't think there's enough movement available in one direction, don't ever count it out. Don't try to pick a direction when you have one of these triangles because it can go either way. In this case, we did move to the downside. And at this point in time, it looks like we're probably going to come down and test those lows back down around 12 on the VIX. And then we'll see if that holds, if that creates a, a bounce in volatility, or do we go back to the levels that uh, we experienced back towards the end of 2017, which was down around the nine level. So we've got a long way to go, uh, potentially, to the downside in the VIX if the market wants to continue to the upside. Tomorrow, I think, will be very interesting in the trading, Thursday's trade, due to the fact that uh, we had the reaction to the FOMC uh, meeting, and then we had the recovery, and then things tend to settle down the day or two after that, and, and we get a better feel for which direction we're going to go. Obviously, we have resistance uh, at the new highs, even though the market has made a new high, uh, but we do have a little bit of a resistance there, but it's not very far away, so we could power through that and continue on to the upside. It's going to be very interesting to see. All right, now we mentioned interest rates, and I told you to come back and take a look at the chart because I was talking about what happened in that uh, repo rate on Monday night, and you can see that we did have a bit of a bounce in rates from this wave three low. So we're right here in the wave three. And uh, on the financial networks, they tend not to mention people's names too often, but there's a guy I respect, Jeffrey Gunlock, uh, came out today, and he's, uh, he's known as a, uh, a pretty good authority in the world of bonds, as putting it mildly. He feels that the low of the rates is in for the year. In other words, we're not going to break this wave three here and move to the downside. He could be right, and here's one of the reasons that the chart may reflect that. 
even though it's showing you that we could be in the midst of a wave four correction here in rates, note that it was only 22%, which to me means that we bounced back up to that FIB 23.6% level. So the 23.6% level viewed by uh, many people in the world of uh, Fibonacci ratios is a support resistance level, in my opinion, just simply isn't that strong. I like the 38.2 is the first level that I count as a corrective level. Now, whether you're correcting to the upside or the downside doesn't matter. I view it as a corrective level, not the 23.6%. To me, when there's a 23.6% retracement, all that is is a level that is acting as support or resistance on the same impulse move. In other words, we're still in the wave three impulse down. So if we come back down here to where the three was and we test those lows and we don't break it, we could from that point begin to form the wave four corrective level and rates go back up. We want to be careful what we wish for. A little bit of a bounce in rates is okay, but something like what happened Monday night would certainly get a lot of people's attention and, and could cause a lot of uh, uh, uneasiness uh, in the equity markets if it were to occur again. The uh, Federal Reserve seems to be on top of it, and if they do continue to inject liquidity, then it's likely that uh, maybe that won't happen again. But there's a lot of people that are... Uh, that are pretty upset with the Federal Reserve, our president included, thinking that uh, they went too far. They didn't raise rates a whole lot, but they did raise rates, but it was that withdrawal uh, or that reduction of their balance sheet, the withdrawal of liquidity involved in reducing their balance sheet that may have pushed things a little too far and created the tightness that allowed the, that bounce to occur in rates. So if the Federal Reserve does continue, which is my opinion, just my opinion, and I don't have any more knowledge than anybody else about what the Federal Reserve is going to do, obviously, but it is my opinion that that probably got their attention and we're likely to see some more quantitative easing uh, in the not too distant future. That should stabilize rates, so that should stop a, uh, another pop back to the upside. Maybe rates just drift back down. Maybe they come down and test those lows. Maybe Mr. Gunlock is right and we don't go lower than that, or maybe we power down even further in a wave three lower. All I wanted to mention is that uh, in my mind, we're still in an impulse move to the downside and uh, we may very well come down and test those lows. Whether we break them or not, we'll just have to wait and see. But uh, very interesting times and a lot of things I think that uh, uh, maybe the general public wasn't quite aware of that have been going on. Certainly got my attention because um, I was trading back in 2007, 8, and 9 and uh, uh, I know how scary that time was and I'm sure everybody is familiar with it as well from the financial crisis. So for now, things seem to be okay. Market seems to want to move back to the upside. If we get the help from the Federal Reserve with the uh, quantitative easing and continued lower rates, that certainly could be enough uh, ammunition for the market to move to the hot upside and, and hit that 100% extension, complete the wave C of the zigzag pattern, and fulfill the VIX coming down to the low. So that catches you up to date. Hope everybody's well. Look forward to talking to you again next time. Take care, everybody.